An international conservative conference being held in Brussels was shut down by the police on Tuesday on the orders of Brussels' socialist mayor, who'd already pressured two other venues into cancelling the conference before it took place. It's like me trying to find a venue to perform comedy in. The conference, known as NatCon, finally found a home in a wedding venue run by a Tunisian man who believes in free speech, who is ominously threatened by authorities that if he carries on with this conference, they'll make sure he will go out of business. And the threats were serious. The mayor ordered the police to shut down the event, surround the building and prevent anyone from entering the building to guarantee public safety. Wow, thanks for keeping the public safe from these politicians who I'm sure were about to leap from the stage and claw at the public's faces. If only Europe could be so robustly conscious of public safety when it comes to enforcing its actual borders instead of the borders around conference venues. Sadly, when it comes to undocumented fighting age men from violent medieval misogynist homophobic cultures entering Europe, it suddenly becomes illegal to guarantee public safety. Still, I'm sure a Janjaweed militant Islam is much less dangerous than Suella Braverman. According to Speaker Frank Ferredi, the police told the owner that if the conference wasn't shut down, they would cut the electricity. Worst of all, caterers were stopped from entering, leaving hungry conservatives to rummage in their bag for a Kit Kat. The venue owner, Mr. Lassad Ben Yaglain, who I apologise to for that pronunciation, said that he disagreed with his guest politics, but believed that freedom of speech was more important. Standing up to the mayor has a cost for him though. The mayor's office threatened to withdraw his venue's operating licence and his car was also towed, which shows the insane level of power politicians have to exert over citizens. The mayor apparently ordered the police to storm the conference and drag speakers from the stage, saying that the far right was not welcome in the city. Mmm, tolerant. However, who does the mayor welcome? Well, he himself hosted a radical Iranian politician in Brussels, the mayor of Tehran, who's overseen women being shot and tortured for protesting and not wearing veils, and has also been sanctioned by the UK for human rights abuses. His deputy, Emir Kir, also met with far-right Turkish politicians. Such kindness and tolerance, and a wake-up call for anyone on the left deluding themselves that shutting down a conservative conference means the establishment are taking a hard line on any speech that could be dangerous. Instead of recognising this as grossly overplaying their hand, the left revelled in it with jeering laughter in the British Parliament. In a sneak preview of how Sir Keir Starmer's Labour government will treat the opposition, Labour's shadow health minister Wes Streeting said that Suella Braverman was in Brussels with some far-right fanatics. And of course a source close to the right honourable member for Fareham who couldn't be here today with us Mr Deputy Speaker because she's currently in Brussels surrounded by uh, the police who are trying to sh shut down the event she's attended with some far-right fanatics um, with whom she has much in common. Hmm, nice and balanced Wes. The left waffer came out and forced to mock conservatives. The Guardian, which is the Pravda of the progressive left, simultaneously crowed that NatCon is tiny and irrelevant and watched by no one and is also the greatest threat to democracy. Well, which one is it? The Guardian's John Crace, who used to write warm, witty satire, but like much of the left, has retreated to angry tribalism, insisted that Farage not only has himself to blame, but actually wants to get cancelled for attention. It read like a boorish drunk in the pub insisting that a woman wants to be beaten because she likes the drama. John's article ended with a bizarre conspiratorial rant that it's not conservatives being persecuted, it's actually the Guardian being hunted down by teams of lawyers, the rich and powerful lobby groups with opaque funding and authoritarian states. Which would make a bit more sense if it was the Guardian offices that were raided by police yesterday instead of NatCon. The eternally unemployed left-wing virgin Femi said, To the NatCons crying about Brussels impinging on their free speech, you supported a government that has restricted our right to protest, admitted to deliberately stopping thousands of people voting, and banned teachers from teaching facts. So yes, we are laughing at you now. Femi's conflating the Tories with NatCon, but the Tory party aren't at NatCon. The Tory party aren't even conservative anymore. They're high tax, high spin, big welfare state, and they push through ridiculous progressive legislation. This week, a smoking ban that even New Zealand's Jacinda Ahern thought was too radical a nanny state. And this idea that NatCon is a fringe movement or fanatics is ridiculous. These weren't far-right extremists. Speakers included Viktor Orban, hungry Prime Minister, Suella Braverman, who's the former UK Home Secretary, and Eric Zemmour, who ran for the French presidency in 2022. These are mainstream figures. 
Germany, France, Italy and Poland all have hard right parties in government or polling above 20%. Marine Le Pen and Gert Wilders could be the next presidents of France and the Netherlands respectively. Around the world people are turning to right wing leaders such as Trump and Javier Millet to fix the damage left by socialist governments or in Trump's case to fix the damage left by Trump. In fact most of the people at NatCon are pretty centrist. Many of the policies they support are already in place across Europe and this perhaps explains why the establishment is so terrified of NatCon and why they shut it down. The right is on the rise across Europe and the left are using every trick to try and crush them. This is just a taste of what's coming. The West is slowly drifting into communism and any dissent, any desperate plea for freedom is going to be persecuted. Being right wing is going to be illegal. Governments openly discuss banning right wing parties such as the AFD in Germany who are polling higher than established parties. Hilariously this is justified as protecting democracy because nothing protects democracy better than stopping people voting for who they want to vote for. Europe is sinking a trillion euros into the folly of net zero as well leading to soaring taxes, onerous regulations and farms being shut down to hit emissions targets. Unsurprisingly this has been unpopular and has led to waves of protests across the continent as people realise something the government hasn't. We need farms to grow food. It's very difficult to get enough calories from emissions targets. And 15 minute cities are the testing ground for a techno communism where cameras can see if you use your car to travel outside your allotted area and then send you automated punishments. These rules are reminiscent of communist East Germany where if you wanted to buy a car you had to wait for years and finally get a rubbish car because that's communism. But you also went on a list of problematic people who wanted to travel where they wanted to go instead of just going where the state ordained public transport told you you could go. And through mass immigration from culturally distant countries the establishment have foisted diversity on Europe that nobody really asked for except for left wing politicians who admit that they wanted to rub the right's nose in diversity and tip the electoral balance in their own favour as immigrants were expected to vote for left wing parties. Multiculturalism hasn't worked out as well as they hoped and now they're panicking. They think the only way to preserve the social fabric is to make it illegal to question or criticise these policies. It's mad that Western Europe defeated communism just to become a rubbish version of it with extra social degeneracy. For a long time there was a belief in the West that as autocratic states such as China became richer a burgeoning middle class would demand freedom and they, they would gradually gravitate towards becoming a western style democratic country. Instead China has become more authoritarian and the West is becoming more like China. This is driven by technology, by the share of the economy funded by the government and by a pussified low testosterone population who prioritise safety over freedom. The share of GDP spent by governments is relentlessly ratcheting up across the West. With so much money spent by the government this gives the government huge power over business who have to toe the line to keep themselves in favour. Similarly the increase in legislation and regulation of businesses under left wing governments gives them more power to control and close businesses just as we've seen with the Brussels mayor threatening to revoke the licence of the NatCon venue. The left talk about fascism but fascism is the co-option of the executive arms of the state and private business into an authoritarian government which is exactly what we're seeing in left wing governments. Technology is giving governments the means to monitor their citizens like never before with hate crime laws allowing them to monitor and police conversations in the privacy of private dwellings. And the surprising popularity of lockdown told western governments that their weak, flabby, self obsessed citizens prefer the illusion of safety to the scariness of real freedom. I think the left have seen the success of social censoriousness where certain words and opinions are abhorrent to polite society and result in the complete ostracization of anyone voicing them and are trying to turn that unspoken cultural shift into official policy. They're going to make it illegal to be right wing and say anything that could be considered right wing. They're going to shut down any media outlet that platforms the right. Legislation like Britain's online safety bill will give them the power to shut down any right wing voice on the internet. The establishment already smears anyone on the right as radical right or far right or fascist or Nazi as an attempt to justify persecuting them. There are NGOs, charities and media outlets with very shady funding who persecute anyone on the right. And the worst thing is the Tories probably won't even try to stop them as right wing parties siphon off Tory votes. And people on the left seem blind to the fact that this communist censorship machine can come for their babies as well. Just last week police in Berlin interrupted and cancelled a pro-Palestine 
Palestine conference soon after it started because one of the speakers, who hadn't actually made it to the conference, was subject to a ban on political activity in Germany. It feels like everyone's going communist. Even the new right-wing movement on display at NatCon have moved away from the freedom of Thatcher and Reagan to loosely coalesce around a more autocratic vision with big government, a big welfare state and military and economic isolationism. The modern right don't like the meritocracy of the free market and they want to preserve jobs through state intervention. They're more Arthur Scargill than Margaret Thatcher. I hate to say it, but it looks like at elections in the future you're just going to be able to choose what flavour of communism you want. I do agree with NatCon's pro-natalist policies though that make it more economically viable for women to produce the workers of the future by being able to afford to have children. Call me old-fashioned, but I do think that the main way for people to enter Britain should be through a woman's birth canal rather than across the English Channel. The only bright point I can see is that communism eventually fails as authoritarian rules calcify the economy. Eventually it will reach a point where a Javier Millet type will be voted in to sweep away all the worthless Stasi apparatchiks and start afresh with a free and fair government. Afuera! The irony is that in trying to close it down, the left-wing establishment have handed NatCon a huge PR boost. Being a conservative is now like being in the Sex Pistols. Police try and shut down your gigs. You've probably got a Union Jack on your t-shirt. Guardian columnists scream, ban this sick filth. The left have managed the unimaginable, making conservatism the refuge of the rebellious. And everyone can see that the speakers at NatCon aren't conspiracists, but are actually right. Suella Braverman spoke at the conference about how Britain could leave restrictive European institutions such as the European Convention on Human Rights, the ECHR. And her argument is surely given a boost now that we've seen this example of how European institutions are controlled by the far left and are weaponized to persecute political dissidents. And for anyone who likes happy endings, in a late night emergency decision, a Belgian court ruled the police shutdown of NatCon was unconstitutional and overturned it. So the conference will go ahead, but with quite a few more people watching now. Anyway, thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe, but don't share this with your local strident left-wing politician because they'll have me shut down. And if you want to support me making these videos, consider becoming a Patreon from as little as £3 a month. You get early access to videos, you get some Patreon-only content. I mean, you don't get that much, to be honest, considering what you, what you pay. So consider it uh, some sort of government tax. Anyway, thanks for listening. I've been Leo Kearse. Bye. Bye-bye.